All right, everyone, welcome to the next episode of Professor Sani's Super Happy Fun Hour, uh, Anatomy Hour. So this is uh, lecture 8-1 on the anterior abdominal wall. Uh, in this lecture, we'll talk about the developmental processes that actually form the body walls. Uh, so here in this slide, you can see the structures of the body wall uh, and the palpable uh, bony prominences that will form the basis of your clinical uh, examinations. Um, but uh, before we get to those, let's talk about the development and the formation of the body wall itself. You're familiar with this image after the process of gastrulation has occurred and you uh, develop this intermediate, um, this, this in-between layer, the mesodermal layer. We've already talked about the paraxial mesoderm and how it, uh, especially in, in limb bud formation and limb formation, as well as the formation of the apaxial muscles of the back. And now we'll be talking about the lateral plate mesoderm in red. The lateral plate mesoderm is the portion that ends up forming the body wall. And we can see that in about the third week of development, this is another cross-sectional view of the embryo, we can see that, that uh, uh, the lateral mesoderm ends up forming two different layers. One is the uh, more dorsal portion is the parietal uh, layer of the lateral mesoderm and the more ventral portion around the yolk sac is the visceral portion of the lateral mesoderm. <clears throat> so uh, in the beginning of the fourth week these uh, lateral mesodermal structures begin to fold in different ways around the lateral sides of the yolk sac and uh, anterior and posteriorly rostrally and caudally uh, to form the, uh, the fetal position of the embryo. <clears throat> so you can see here how this process uh, through this cross section, this axial section through the embryo, how the, uh, the parietal mesoderm folds around the, uh, to the sides to the bottom of the embryo, forming that uh, anterior abdominal wall. During this process, the uh, yolk sac shrinks in some areas and gets encompassed, surrounded by the visceral uh, uh, lateral mesodermal layer. So what ends up happening is the gut tube uh, is formed from the yolk sac. So that forms your entire GI tract, your stomach, and your intestines. Uh, and that is surrounded by uh, the, uh, the visceral layer of lateral mesoderm. <clears throat> the outside of the body wall, the anterior uh, musculature, uh, etc., the, the dermis of the body wall is formed by the parietal layer of that lateral mesoderm. Now let's take a look at a sagittal view, a sagittal cross-section, so we can see the rostral and caudal folding that also occurs. <clears throat> so you can see here the yolk sac quite large in this early stage. And as the uh, folding takes place, uh, that uh, uh, parietal uh, mesoderm is going to cause uh, the curvature, the, uh, the rostral and the caudal curvature of the embryo uh, to form that uh, bent uh, fetal position. You can also see in this view the yolk sac, uh, which protrudes out of the uh, ventral portion of the embryo uh, as it's developing. So portions of the gut, of the gut tube, actually form outside the body wall of the embryo during development. <clears throat> Usually by about the sixth week, uh, this portion becomes uh, obliterated and the yolk sac, it becomes fully internalized. The gut tube becomes internalized. So there's this physiological process where the gut tube protrudes out of the embryo during development and then during that timeline uh, retracts back in. And this causes its curved, convoluted shape within our abdomens. <clears throat> if that process doesn't occur, uh, then we can get some defects, which we'll talk about in a second. 
so I found this animation quite a while ago, which you can get on your PDFs of these slides. Um, uh, unfortunately, I can't get it to work on any computers anymore because it was in uh, shockwave flash uh, formation, but it's, it's an animated version of these images, so you can actually see that curvature process, the folding process take place. So here are some of those defects that occur if the body wall closure doesn't happen uh, as programmed. Uh, so there's a number of these you can look through. Uh, the most uh, notable is gastroschisis, where the body wall fails to close anteriorly over the yolk sac, and thus the gut forms and remains outside of the anterior abdominal wall. This, on, the, uh, on my right of this slide, you can see an example of a fetus uh, that had this anterior abdominal wall defect, gastroschisis, where the gut, uh, the, the gut tube is actually forming outside the body wall. Here on the left, we have an example of an omphalocele. This is not a defect of body wall closure. An omphalocele is a failure of that physiological retraction of the yolk sac. So the body wall is closing as normal and the um, gut tube is forming as normal except uh, as it's protruding out and forming outside the uh, abdominal wall, it doesn't end up retracting back uh, into the abdomen. So a portion of it ends up in the umbilical cord. Uh, and so as a result, uh, this is a kind of uh, ventral body wall defect, which is not the result of a body wall closure problem. So that's it for this lecture. Uh, next lecture, we'll talk about the adult structures.